To everybody and welcome to this new webinar of the clinical web series focused on breast ultrasound. My name is Laura Taroni and I am the European Marketing Manager for General Imaging Ultrasound in G Healthcare. It is my pleasure today to introduce to you our speaker who is Dr. Alfonso Fausto from Italy. Dr. Fausto is working in the Diagnostic Imaging Department led by Professor Volterrani at the University Hospital Liscotte in Siena, very nice town in Italy. He has been a, a very dear friend and partner for G Ultrasound for many years. He has been pioneering the use of fusion imaging in breast care, with also few publications already on this topic. Tonight, Dr. Fausto will talk about personalized breast care through a tailored imaging approach, guiding us through few women's stories where multimodality imaging played different roles along the care pathway. Before starting the webinar, I would like to give you some practical information. I'd like to invite you all to submit any question you could have in the Q&A chat box. All the questions will be answered at the end of the session by Dr. Fausto. Now, it is my pleasure to hand over to Dr. Alfonso Fausto and wish you all an interesting webinar. Thank you and talk to you later. Thank you all of you to be here. And uh, I want to introduce myself. I work in a university hospital of uh, Siena in two different departments. The Department of uh, Diagnostic Imaging of uh, Professor Volterrani and the Department of, of Breast Imaging of Dr. Fantozzi. Uh, the facility has a number of uh, uh, equipment uh, and uh, as you can read from the slides, this is the numbers of the uh, examination made in 2019. I want to introduce uh, this webinar uh, uh, state, with this statement. We, we all uh, follow the international and national guidelines to give uh, indication on uh, uh, each case that you want to uh, give attention. And generally, uh, we approach the study of the patient according uh, age and the risk factor, and of course, uh, uh, on the equipment available in our facility. We always try to keep in mind uh, and uh, without prejudice uh, on how breast cancer can show itself to our attention. Of course, uh, a personalized breast care pathway uh, means uh, to choose for uh, each uh, occasion uh, the, the right equipment to uh, study the patient and to find out the problem that we can face. The aim of this webinar is to present some clinical cases, to engage all of you in the decision making, asking uh, what you, uh, what, what is your choice uh, about uh, uh, the, what happened for the patient, to show you the results and uh, to listen your comment and criticism about the management uh, from the diagnosis to the treatment. I want to uh, show you first the first case with two lines of history about this female that come into my office complaining increased swelling on the left breast. No risk factor, no family history, and in the previous examination of 2014, uh, she had a fibro de novo of four, millimeter, four centimeter on the uh, left breast. This is the uh, ultrasound, some images of the ultrasound of the left breast. The pattern is very glandular, and this is the lesion of the upper sternal quadrant of the left breast, more or less 42 centimeter. This is the image of the right breast in which there is a, a tiny cyst 
or internal medial quadrant. And the conclusion of this examination was that uh, uh, the palpable mass uh, on the left breast uh, is substantially a benign mass uh, and it seems to be uh, the same of the previous examination. So I concluded that it was a virus to lesion. Of course, for the, uh, for the complaining of the patient uh, due to the increase of the volume of the breast, I performed a biopsy to be sure that something wrong uh, was not going on. This is some image of the biopsy. You can see here the needle in different parts of the lesion to be sure that the sampling was correct. And at pathology, it was a pericanalicular fiber denoma, confirming that the nature of the lesion was benign. So, I want to ask you uh, what we can do, what uh, sh uh, should you do in this case, considering uh, the uh, situation. One year follow-up, an indication for surgical intervention, or additional imaging, uh, like contra-enhanced MRI or a mammography, considering the age and the risk factor of the lady. So please make your choice. So I want to show you what happened uh, to me when I decided to, to perform a, um, a breast MR imaging. And you can show here, you can see here the uh, subtracted imaging after postal contrast media that uh, this is the lesion and uh, this is something wrong upon the lesion. So I concluded after this examination that the examination was a Barat's 5. Something wrong was uh, on the left breast. And in fact, if you uh, see the breast, uh, this is the uh, fiber denoma, but uh, upon the fiber denoma and surrounding the fiber denoma, there was uh, an enhancing pathologic lesion. Of course, uh, not only these uh, uh, elements MR imaging show it, we can see here a, a small uh, lump and nodule of the of the lung and the suspicious uh, lymph nodes on the left breast uh, in the left axilla and uh, it was requested by the surgeon even the mammography to be sure that uh, something could be visible even on mammography. And if you do the correlation between breast mammography and breast MR, you cannot localize the lesion. Probably is something wrong here nearby the lesion, but is not uh, clearly visible in the mammography. So I, start, I decided to do the breast MR guided biopsy because uh, the, the, the dimension of the breast is very large. So it was uh, uh, impossible to approach the lesion after the sacrolic ultrasound. And uh, I decided to, to obtain the results of the pathologic exam examination with uh, this type of uh, examination. 
And the final diagnosis was uh, an invasive lobular carcinoma on the left breast and uh, an hematoma of 6 mm in the lung. And of course, the hematoma was studied with uh, a CT guided biopsy. Last but not least, the problem that we have to face was to, to understand how to schedule the follow-up in this patient because, uh, because uh, it's very important to study the, this lady in, with the ultrasound, but uh, I think that uh, lobular lesions uh, are not easily visible at the ultrasound, so we consider to do, even in the presence of uh, the uh, tissue expander, uh, to do a uh, breast MRI. And of course, uh, this type of uh, 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 examination in, uh, leads us to um, a publication in which we uh, demonstrate that uh, uh, the contralateral breast, even in presence of a, a tissue expander, could be visible and could be of help uh, or can help to diagnose uh, uh, lesion in the presence of the uh, tissue expander. So we can move to the uh, case two. A female of uh, 47 years old during uh, the annual skimming mammography. And uh, the previous uh, year, she was, uh, uh, she underwent to a uh, quadrantectomy for DCIS and uh, a biopsy with mammography guidance at the after external quadrant of the left breast. No family history, no genetic test, and this is uh, the mammography. So you can see that uh, there is a, a marker here of the previous uh, stereotactic guidance, and uh, in the internal uh, inferior quadrant of the right breast that reviews quadrantectomy, uh, uh, nothing or suspicious can be detected. This is the images of the ultrasound in which uh, is depicted a, a, a mild enlargement, a segmental enlargement of the duct in the area of the pre previous quadrantectomy. Axilla negative. And on the other side, you can see here a, a tiny lesion probably related to the previous uh, uh, stereotactic guidance and a negative axilla. So the conclusion was that uh, on the right side, uh, an irregular hypochoic breast lesion was found, probably in the area of the uh, stereotactic uh, biopsy, and a segmental ect ectasia of the uh, right breast. Uh, in the previous area of the quadrantectomy. So, this is the image of the elastography of the lesion of the uh, left breast that could be uh, mixed between a, a, um, a hard area and a soft area. So it was classified by a spore for the distortion and irregular margin of the lesion. So we perform a dynamic uh, breast MRI. This is the uh, steer sequence. And uh, this is the subtraction uh, subtracted images of the post contrast uh, enhanced uh, breast MRI and I want you
to show better something wrong uh, on the right breast uh, in the inner internal quadrant, the same quadrant of the previous uh, uh, quadrantectomy, and something uh, at the confluence of, of uh, superior quadrant of the of the left breast. The same breast uh, underwent to the stereotactic guidance. So uh, this is a partial MIP in which you can see the the uh, this the multiple area of pathologic announcement of the right breast. And the second look ultrasound showed the, the same area in which uh, was depicted the segmental uh, dilatation of the duct previously uh, showed. Of course, what is easy to, to do the sampling in that area thanks to the uh, segmental ectasia. And a pathology resulted an atypical ductal hyperplasia. So all the depiction uh, of the of the MR imaging were correlated to this type of pathology results. But if you consider the diagnostic concordance among the pathologists uh, for breast bio specimen. In case of atypia, there is a large different interpretation. And thanks to this publication, I want to ask you what you can do, what you suggest in this case. One year follow-up, an indication for surgical intervention, an additional biopsy, and uh, uh, an MR guided biopsy or a uh, US guided biopsy with volume navigation, please make your choice. And I want to show you what I have done. I have performed a dynamic breast MRI in a supine position. You can see here the marker upon the skin. And you can see how it's easy to obtain a, a breast MRI in supine position with the normal and uh, uh, equipment that every, or everyone has everyone has in the facility. And this is the subtracted uh, images in which you can recognize uh, the lesion at the internal quadrant of the lower uh, right breast. And of course, I have done a, a biopsy with the fusion uh, guided biopsy with the US, in which you can see here the area and the localization with the needle perpendicular to the, to the area with a mixture of iodine and coracol vegetal fluid lipid to for surgical uh, removal. And this is the mammography after the, the procedure. You can see uh, the tissue marker of the previous uh, uh, US guided uh, biopsy. And then you can see here the mixture between uh, the uh, iodine contrast media and uh, vegetal, vegetal uh, charcoal uh, to, to tell to the to the surgeon, the area of interest. And the final diagnosis was uh, that uh, in the same area of the quadrantectomy and radiotherapy, a DCIS was found, or 43 millimeter. So, of course, the lady was uh, undergo to a mastectomy. 
thanks to this uh, study, thanks to this uh, uh, experience, uh, two different papers were published in which uh, we consider all the uh, experience uh, made on the um, second ultrasound with volume navigation and uh, biopsy and the feasibility of the uh, and quality imaging of the breast MRI uh, compared to the uh, breast MRI in spine position. So we can move to the case number three. A female with a multiple, multiple palpable lumps of the right breast. This is a case of this year, 20, uh, 52 years old, no family history, no risk factors, a previous mammography negative. And this is the mammography show it. And of course, it was judged like uh, uh, virus one. This is the tonosynthesis of the right breast, the same breast of the lady complaining this uh, enlargement. And even if you consider the tonosynthesis, you can't see anything. And I show you two videos of the uh, right breast from the beginning of the nipple area to the external quadrant and uh, from the nipple area to the upper confluence of the superior quadrant. And of course, you can see here that nothing can be visible at US. So we have a breast US and a mammography totally negative. What would you do in this case? You have a lady in your office that complain an enlargement and palpable subjective lumps. And you can see an increased uh, uh, enlargement of the uh, breast without see anything at imaging. So one year follow up, clinically guided breast biopsy, US guided breast biopsy, contrast enhancing breast MRI. Please make your choice. And of course, uh, for the reason that we want to, to be sure and to be safe, we decided to perform a, a U.S. guided biopsy. You can see here that uh, a, a very zircoic lesion, very small, 8 millimeters, looks like uh, uh, probably benign, but at pathology, as you can read here, the results was invasive ductal carcinoma. This is the tear image sequence because we decided to perform a, a breast MRI. And uh, you can see here the subtracted image after contrast media administration. And you can see here how it was. We have done the second look ultrasound and uh, we concluded that uh, uh, at second look ultrasound nothing was visible. At the uh, left breast we can see an enhancing lesion, tiny lesion that at the second look it resulted at a fibrodroma of 9 millimeters. A spinal diagnosis was a multicenter, multicentric uh, EDCIS, EDC, 
G1 plus invasive globular carcinoma. It was a mixed uh, uh, cancer of the right breast and a fibroadenoma of the left breast. So we can move to the case number four. A female of 60 years old, 63 years old, with a palpable lump at the confluence of the external quadrant of the right breast. An invasive globular carcinoma was uh, diagnosed at pathology in a other hospital, so they sent to me this patient for local staging with MRI. This is the mammography. which you can see here the lesion of the right breast. This is the, the steer sequence of the right and left breast. No pathological signal can be detected. And this is the subtracted image, the post-contrast uh, image. And you can see here that on the left breast there is something wrong, but it was reported that the cancer was on the right breast. Probably here, in the upper stellar quadrant, you can show, you can see here something wrong, but what you do in case of uh, a very different results between the previous information and the actual information which uh, is referred a cancer on the right breast, and you can find a, a, a cancer on the right, on the left breast, but you don't see anything sure correlated to the the the, the information that sent to you. Please, uh, what you choose in this case, you call immediately the radiologist that uh, performed the previous examination, reported a wrong sign. You perform a second look to see if uh, the, the lesion are two or not. You contact the surgeon for additional clinical information or you report only the contrast and answer what you see on the contrast and answer MRI. Please make your choice. And the final diagnosis was uh, that she had a bilateral cancer in which uh, we have an invasive lobular carcinoma G1, uh, uh, a luminal R cancer not visible at the MRI imaging, and a EDC invasive ductal carcinoma of the left breast. You see, this was the first case in which uh, uh, MR imaging can't see anything even in presence of a proven cancer of the breast. So now we can move to the last case, the five, number five, in which uh, uh, here uh, I present you uh, a female of 61 years old with a negative screening mammography in 2017. And the, and the mammogram was also negative in 2008, but she didn't do the ultrasound, the automatic breast ultrasound. But after four months, he decided to undergo to abus because she found a palpable node mass. This is the 
the mammography, the craniocaudal mammography. And this is the medial-lateral uh, mammography. Of course, this is a, a, a very dense breast in which uh, more or less nothing is uh, visible. Even she complained uh, a palpable node on the left breast. The examination made in a different projection immediately uh, detects a large breast cancer of the left breast that can be easy, uh, easy very uh, in easy way uh, visible uh, a cancer in the, the coronal view in which you can see the distortion of the lesion. And you can see here the other, the second, the additional uh, breast cancer here in another projection. And of course, uh, you can see the advantage of the automatic breast ultrasound compared to the, to the uh, handheld uh, uh, US, in which uh, you can see the distance, the position, the relation to the coronal uh, and the sagittal view to the muscle, and uh, a very good quality of the examination. The vascularization of the handed uh, ultrasound and the characteristic of the lesion. And the final diagnosis was uh, an invasive ductal carcinoma, luminal A, very large cancer, and of course uh, uh, was an advantage to, to do this type of uh, examination. So in conclusion, it is impossible to know how will appear the next breast cancer. So we can imagine uh, uh, the interval time uh, uh, that can allow us to detect uh, uh, the lesion, the breast cancer, and only using uh, a personalized uh, multimodality image approach, we can uh, Good, a good answer, we can give a good answer to our patients. And of course, it requires a bigger effort because we have to do uh, most confident to the old diagnostic uh, and interventional devices that uh, now are currently available in our facility. I want to thank you all for your attention and uh, I wait for your uh, question to my presentation. Thank you. I would like to, to thank you a lot um, for your interest in presentation, uh, in particular being a woman, because uh, I tell you that um, seeing then uh, uh, your uh, commitment, your patience, uh, your uh, engagement really to find uh, and to go deeper into the analysis of a case, and uh, we are not just a case, your patients are women, and in this case, uh, the way you want really to find uh, and to understand what maybe it is difficult to understand from, uh, from the first examination. So that's why you, you never, I would say, um, you never stop, and you go till, uh, till the end to have an answer. So, and we have many more cases when we came to Siena as well, you have been showing a very challenging cases. So from a women's standpoint, really, uh, really thank you for, uh, for uh, what you did and, uh, and for uh, what you showed as well. So you displayed so many cases, um, and uh, you showed that every woman's story so is different. Every cancer story is different uh, and also needs to be managed in a different way. So I think uh, um, the use of a personalized uh, approach uh, can really make a difference in the life uh, of these uh, women. 
And uh, I think that what is good for one could not maybe be for another, uh, from a cancer to another cancer. So that's why it uh, was, uh, was really barely visible from, uh, from your presentation. So thanks a lot for all these cases. Now I would like to review with you some of the questions we collected uh, during the session. So, and uh, I have um, two or three questions. Uh, uh, maybe I will ask you the question, and after I will mute my microphone so you can uh, open yours. I think the first one is um, saying, OK, Dr. Fausto, thanks for your lecture. It seems uh, uh, you have uh, two departments in your hospital focused uh, on breast care. And uh, thinking about uh, personalized breast care, how do you select uh, the best uh, care pathway for uh, each patient or each case that uh, you have? Historically, we have two different departments because uh, uh, the uh, breast imaging was divided by the uh, university side and the hospital side. Then uh, uh, um, the uh, chief of the hospital de decided to, to melt all the facility, uh, maintaining two different departments in which uh, uh, we try to cooperate uh, to, to build uh, an entire team specialized uh, in a different modality. Uh, personally, I read uh, mammography, do biopsy, but personally, I do uh, um, breast MRI and uh, all the intervention uh, MR guided uh, breast MRI. And uh, of course, uh, the, the, the uh, intention and the, um, the will of this type of organization is to, to um, uh, let all the people of the team grow in the area that feel uh, comfortable. So uh, the, the, the answer to the uh, population, to all the women uh, uh, coming in the hospital in uh, Siena is to give uh, different uh, answer according to the, uh, 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 the, the particular case. We uh, do a, a session which uh, discuss the case and uh, try to to select the better approach and the better person that can be a uh, um, unique uh, reference for the type of uh, situation. So it's uh, it's a personalized uh, uh, breast care pathway in this case uh, for each case, as you said. So that's why you decided the best uh, department and uh, um, competence actually that you you will uh, you will uh, use in your departments. I think we got uh, uh, two additional questions. So live now, one is. Uh, uh, will be there, in your opinion, more modalities available in future for investigation? Uh, I haven't present. I have no. Uh, I have some. For this presentation, I have to do a, a choice. So uh, cases of uh, spectral uh, mammography was uh, excluded. But uh, I think that uh, contrast uh, enhanced mammography could be another uh, modality for the future. Uh, we um, have uh, a dual energy CT that we have uh, uh, published a study in which we have com uh, compared the result uh, of. Uh, uh, spectral imaging CT of the breast with uh, uh, lower energy. So I think that, uh, uh, of course, if you work in a hospital in which you can have uh, lots of equipment, uh, you can find and you can choose the, uh, during the time with the experience uh, the better one for the typical case, of course. Yes, thank you for your answer. Definitely, I think you are in a 
I would say, lucky situation when you can have uh, many different equipment to understand which is the best care pathway for your patients. And also your patients are also the luckiest one, if you want, uh, so having uh, such a kind of patient and uh, solutions. Uh, another question is, do you follow risk assessment for personalized care? As you can read in the presentation, uh, the Gale assessment uh, risk model is one of uh, the models that we have. That we, have. Uh, we try to connect with the, the genetic uh, uh, department uh, to collect uh, all the BRCA1, BRCA2 and other mutation uh, 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 for uh, breast cancer. And of course, uh, uh, we in started to use some uh, software uh, available on internet in which uh, are proposed some models. But of course, uh, it, is a, it is an area of study and research. It is not a daily practice. In daily practice, we asked for uh, what uh, the game model proposed to assess the risk in a, in a, buzz, in a first way. And of course, we implement, we, we increase our detail uh, if we find uh, something that uh, is uh, atypical. Okay, very, uh, very good. Uh, I have uh, two, three more questions, Dr. Fausto. The first one is about uh, some cases that you showed. And it's, uh, we saw that in case uh, one, uh, you performed a MRI guided biopsy, while in case uh, clinical case two, you did a biopsy guided by ultrasound MRI fusion imaging. Can you explain the rationale behind this? Uh, there are, I mean, any limitation uh, to use a fusion imaging in uh, all cases? Uh, the first patient, uh, uh, the patient in the first case, uh, has a, 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 a very large breast. So when we do the uh, MRI in supine position, we have a very uh, unpredictable um, dislocation of breast. So it's not easy in that case to perform a, a US guided uh, biopsy with volume navigation. So we prefer in that case to go straight to the hemorrhagic biopsy. In the second uh, case, the women have a, a, a previous uh, uh, surgery. So, uh, and the, the position of the lesion was very close to the cest wall. So, uh, mm -hmm. for this reason, uh, uh, we decided to go to the other type of uh, mm -hmm. uh, biopsy with volume navigation that is very safe in case uh, of uh, uh, nipple area and uh, very close to the assessed wall. And it, it was the right choice, I think, because uh, in this case you, you, you can understand uh, 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 how can be safe uh, the biopsy into different cases in this, this different case. Okay. That's, uh, that's okay. That's, uh, that's clear. Now, um, I, I received a um, few more questions, uh, Dr. Fausto. So, I, I will go to the first one uh, from the audience. Is uh, Do you use uh, in your daily routine a shared wave elastography? Because we saw a strain imaging elastography in your presentation. But it's, um, very useful, very easy to apply, and uh, uh, considering that uh, uh, for strain ratio you have to do, uh, for elastography, and, uh, um, uh, for the elastography, uh, you have to do a, a sort of reference, so when we use uh, the strain ratio we have to do uh, a post-processing, so it takes uh, a little bit of time, but of course uh, elastography, and we have demonstrated in a previous publication that uh, uh, she wave and uh, uh, elastography 
uh, strain ratio elastography could be uh, could have the same result. So uh, I show you that image because it's very uh, it's very old. It's 2014, 2015. Uh, but we we use uh, uh, in daily practice uh, shear wave elastography because it's very helpful uh, in uh, the, the decision making making process uh, in case of uh, reduce uh, the unuseful breast biopsy. Okay. Okay. Thank you, uh, Dr. Fausto. I'm reading. Another, another question um, is coming from, uh, I think, a clinician is, uh, uh, why do you use a high brightness of ultrasound images? Uh, at least it seems to be high from the grayscale of the clinical uh, images. You are on mute? Yes, you are on mute, uh, Dr. Fausto. You have to unmute your microphone. Yes, it's a, why do you use a, a high brightness of uh, ultrasound images? Uh, the grayscale, uh, it seems to be uh, very, very bright. Part of the, uh, the, the effect of the video composing, uh, it's very, it's too bright. Uh, the image, but it, it is only the the uh, registration of the video uh, is an F, a collateral effect. It is not the, the true image. The image, uh, the the grayscale presented was similar to the static image presented before, and uh, of course, if you use uh, uh, um, a very bright image, it's much more easy to detect uh, uh, the, the, the cancer if the cancer is uh, um, very fibrotic because it's very uh, hypoechoic. But we have experience of uh, uh, very hyperechoic breast cancer, so we don't use that type of uh, uh, bright image, a gray scale. Okay. And uh, that's, that's what we discussed before your presentation here about the brightness as well, exactly. Uh, we have a Another question is, do you change a, a screening interval for high-risk patient? You are on mute, Dr. Fausto. Uh, because uh, um, we, we have uh, 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 dedicated two days, uh, two uh, half days dedicated to breast MRI. So we used to do uh, uh, a protocol with acquisition time about uh, 50 minutes. Three minutes for steering my sequence and ten minutes for dynamic one, and uh, we do more or less 40, 450 examination per year. So uh, I think that the advantage of the entire protocol could be uh, the choice uh, uh, for our facility. In case of an increased number of the MRI examination, probably the unrated uh, MRI sequence could be of choice. We don't do the um, uh, diffusion weighted image. We left uh, the spectroscopy too, because uh, uh, in our situation, I think it could be of uh, a sort of wasting time of the examination. Okay. Uh, I think my question was uh, about uh, the if you change screening interval time, I guess, for high-risk patient in your institute. 
we decided, uh, the team decided uh, that in case of uh, uh, high-risk patient, familiar risk patient or genetic risk patient, we do uh, only one year examination with the all the examination we can. Uh, in one day, we try to do uh, breast MRI, breast ultrasound, and uh, mammography. Because a very small group of patients, and uh, I think that uh, 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 doing an ultrasound every six months uh, could be a sort of uh, uh, unlikely choice. Okay. I think I have um, a last question. Um, so we saw in the last case uh, there was a patient having a heterogeneous dense breast. Do you have a personalized screening protocol for women with dense breast in your hospital and uh, or in your region? We pay to the screening uh, of the health system so we can offer uh, routinely to all the patients of the screening uh, uh, breast ultrasound because in Italy is not allowed, it's not included. For clinical patients, all the dense breasts undergo to ultrasound and clinical examination. But for the screening, we suggest to the patient of the, of the screening protocol to come for uh, a breast ultrasound uh, in our department out of the screening. So we try to give this opportunity and uh, we try to, uh, to, uh, to study this type of uh, uh, group of patients even with ultrasound knowing that uh, 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 breast uh, um, mammography in dense breast uh, uh, have a sensitivity very low that not uh, uh, ensure a good quality check uh, for the year. Okay. And uh, related to breast density, there is another question saying, do you measure breast density objectively or do visual assessment? Include in our uh, report, uh, a subjective uh, evaluation and uh, uh, we have tried some software that give us the opportunity to classify the density automatically but now is undergoing uh, is under study this type of approach but in all our uh, reports we classify visually and subjectively the density of the breast. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Fausto. I don't see uh, any additional question coming in. I think I covered uh, all the questions. Okay, so I think... Uh, yeah, it is uh, maybe time uh, to close uh, the webinar. But before leaving, I would like to ask you, um, to you all, to answer the survey that you will receive at the end of this meeting. Um, answering the survey will help us to learn more about your uh, what you like, what uh, what you liked, what you disliked, and to improve also the quality of our webinars uh, in the future sessions. I would like to thank you first, Dr. Fausto, for your uh, presentation and for your uh, say commitment uh, towards uh, women and uh, breast care. And I would like to also thank the whole, uh, the whole audience for joining this session. Goodbye to everybody and uh, stay safe in Goodbye. this time. Goodbye and see you next time.